seeker and believer in people power. And Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the eight, Situation Room, minutes the only eight, way to start to your day. Of the Situation Room, happy Thursday. It's the 8th day of February 2024, and we are heading towards the 14th day of February 2024, mm. and that is Valentine's Day. Globally touted as the day of love, you mm. know. So why not? The Elegance in Love dinner, will cocktail dinner actually, will take place on the 14th of February. Where will it take place? It'll take place at Sarit, your city. From what time? 6 p.m. Who should come? All of you. How should you come? Well, you can come as a regular single. Mm -hmm. You can come as a regular couple. You can come as a VIP couple. And you will pay, respectively, 3,000 shillings, 5,500 shillings, or 10,000 shillings. You can get all these tickets on ticketsasa.com. You will then show up at the Sarit, your city, uh, dressed in burgundy and gold. Mm. Then you will sit down and you will be serenaded. Mm. You will sit down and you will be fed, well fed. Mm. You will receive a welcome drink. You will also have great entertainment through the night in none other than the great experience from Wahoo and Nameless that night. Mm. That's what we're going to do. Mm. We're doing it on the 14th. Get your tickets, get dressed, come sit down and enjoy. Wahoo, and there's a feeling in my heart, feeling in my soul, feeling me up from the head to my toe. That one. I see you come on my pansy, ya kawaii. Ah! She will be there, sweet love. Singing that song for you, yes. live and direct. Yes, they'll also sing the one that they've sung up together. <coughs> Back it up. Uh-huh. Yeah? And this and the other. My friend. If you miss. This couple is the embodiment of love. So they're sitting there, they're singing for you as you have your dinner. It's a three-course meal. No, as you have your... Eh? <laughs> Supia Pueza. I'm going to eat what you want to eat. I'm going to eat what you my friend. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Just remember that tomorrow is work. Oh, mm. As you are enjoying. The following day is work. Ah, uh, 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 yes. Yes. The following day you have to go to work. <laughs> Enjoy Rem it, please. <laughs> remember that. <laughs> Ndu. Yes. Everybody is saying that you're looking very good today. Why, thank you. So stand up, we see. No. It's a full dress. It's I'm splendid. <laughs> it's, it's good to be shy. Yes, you're shy. I'm shy. <laughs> Extremely. It's a peacock. Uh, yeah, actually, a peacock. Explain. It's my peacock dress. Explain. It's green, uh -huh. and I bleed green. Uh -huh. And you know the Super Eagles did a thing last night. Uh -huh. uh, we told the Bafanas to go home. Mm -hmm. But you know, we are friends. We are friends. Who? In all things. You and Bafanas? Nigerians and South Africans. No power, no what else? We relate on very many <laughs> levels. <laughs> no violence, please. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Mm. So the Eagles will not... Uh, what the the Bafanas allowed the Eagles now to sort over the elephants. Very good. Mm. So Nigeria is on to the final. Yes, we are of the Africa Cup of Nations. Indeed. Who's the financial partner is? The only financial partner is Echo Bank, mm. your Pan African Bank, which, with a representation of thirty five strong from the African continent, and an employee base of fourteen thousand plus, plus four other countries around the world, says, you know what. How about we make transactions a little bit easier, no matter where in Africa you are or in other parts where the bank is, and let's make Africa a better Africa because of how we're able to transact financially. And they've thrown their weight behind the CAF um, Africa Cup of Nations and said, look, we're bringing Africa together with our banking. How about we throw our support behind Africa in sport? Yes. Lately, all the news coming from the courts uh, seems to have one name. Okay. Oh, Sias Nahumicha violated constitution when she promoted 59 junior officers. Okay. Uh, this new ID ch charges for IDs and passports suspended. Why? Because of th this and the other. Okay. Um, today's headline is... Uh, where is the standard? It's about the 22222. Okay. E citizen school fees blow for defiant Ruto. The one name that you'll see in many of these cases is our guest this morning. He is a consultant, trauma, and general surgeon 
but he has also decided to be a defender of human rights. Dr. Mahara Gikenyi from Nakuru. Good morning, Dr. Eric. Good morning to you, Eric. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. Welcome. Welcome to the hot seat of the Situation Room. We are honored to have the presence of a great man with us here today. Well, thanks a lot. Karibu <laughs> sana. <laughs> Asante. How is Nakuru? Have you Nakuru, Nakuru is Nakuru? doing well. Mm. Uh, it's a very good uh, city. So it's, it's only count with uh, six legs. So once you, you you are tired of doing your work, you can come and uh, see a very good uh, natural environment mm. in the Rift Valley. Yes. Mm. Can you count six legs in Nakuru County? Let me try. Start. Uh, Naivasha. One. Elementaita. Two. The county is called Nakuru. Gosh, I was like, it's called. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Did I say Elementita? Yes, you no, did. No, there's always TC says <laughs> and France. <laughs> and Elementita. <laughs> and Elementita. And, and Nakuru. And Naiva. Those are six. <laughs> <laughs> What are the other three, Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll continue with that. Today. We'll continue. <laughs> okay. So uh, you'll tell us as we go. Yes. Also, Nakuru is where Keringet is in Nakuru. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the water bottling company is there. Yes. Water is bottled at source at Keringet by Keringet. Yes. And uh, they're saying, own your richness, CT. Tell yes. him why. Well. As a medical doctor, he will understand this perhaps a lot more keener than others. Mm. And he will tell you mm. what minerals do to your body. And the supplementary work that it does. Mm. Every part of your body needs water. And what the minerals do, they ensure that all the units of your body now function well. Mm. Whether it is calcium helping with your bones, whether it is zinc that is helping with your immune system, whatever minerals that you may think of. Mm. Many of these minerals are actually found in Keringet. Mm. You'll find magnesium, you'll find calcium, mm. you'll find sodium. Mm. Now, water, when you're told it's life, mm. you assume, well, you feel good, you feel refreshed when you drink water. But you never actually consider what actually it does for you. But when you understand that 60 to 70% of your body is essentially water, now imagine, when you replenish your body mm. with that very substance that actually engulfs the bulk of your person, mm. how better can life be? Indeed, indeed. Please give Dr. Harry the day's proverb. Our Dr. Proverbs Harry, listen to the <laughs> proverb, you'll give us your interpretation of it. Our proverbs the whole of this week come from the country of Namibia, the Republic of Namibia. He who runs after good fortune runs away from peace. He who runs after good fortune runs away from peace. What's the interpretation of this, Dr. Ekenyi? What I can say is that um, sometimes for you to to do something good, mm. sometimes you need to, like you are trying to go against the grain. That's what I can say. Mm. But sometimes for, for, for the other people who always see you are running away from peace, but in reality you are trying to make a situation better. That's what I can say. I this don't is, know. This is a you proverb. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. And, it, and, and, and that is an, a unique and wonderful interpretation. Isn't mm. it? I love yes, it. it is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's completely Dr. Uh, it's that. <laughs> if there was a picture next to a book of pro in the it book of Proverbs. It would be this. It would be, be this one. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Magara, let's, you know, people don't know you. Not many people do. Dr. Magara Kenyi, we see, okay, um, there's a Nakuru-based doctor who's a rights activist who's taken this many cases to court, challenging very many decisions that are being made at national level, at county level in some cases. You're a consultant, trauma, and general surgeon. How long have you been practiced this? Uh, I practiced uh, medicine since the year 2008. Mm -hmm. That's close to 16 years. years. Yep. So I've been serving patients. Like me, uh, I am a surgeon. Surgeon, we treat by using a knife. So uh, mo most, uh, most of the time you find that you are, you are asleep. Mm -hmm. That's the good aspect of it. So you will not feel pain. So we sort so your problem we through a knife. Then mm -hmm. after we have done uh, the surgery part of it, then we wake you up. <laughs> so essentially, you you may not feel pain. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what uh, we sort problem. Like in in the medical field, uh, we we have doctors who treat you well. once. You have told him very your problem. They give you some medication mm -hmm. by writing down. But as surgeons, we sort our problem by using a knife. 
You so, remove the problem. <laughs> you remove the problem directly. <laughs> so sometimes if you do me even a search right now, you may find a knife. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> when did you decide yes. then to start removing problems in society by going to court? Um, I think it was around 2005, no, 2000 and, um, uh, 2017, uh, when I was in the university, more university, at one time we were joking with one of my lecturers with, with this politics of our U.S. Mm. between Trump and, uh, and Bill Clinton, and not Bill, and Hillary. Clinton, Hillary Clinton. Yeah. So I think one of the lecturers was offended. I, I was a support, a support of Trump by then. Mm. So then uh, I think we were offended. Then I think uh, he raised a complaint to the university that I was a bad doctor at that time. So without being given an opportunity, then I was suspended from, uh, from university just on that political aspect alone. Mm. So because of that aspect, so I moved to court. I got the orders of injunction to allow me to continue <laughs> my education. Mm -hmm. So from that aspect, uh, it gave me some, some good work. Also, when I was also a young boy, I come from an account called Kisi. Mm -hmm. we, we, we grew up in a fairly poor farm background. So sometimes when you would go to, to fetch the water from the river, sometimes you, can, you could get some other boys telling you to move away mm. because we came from fairly poor family background. Um, my dad had, had 16 children and, then, uh, and so we were, we were not very respected in, the, in that society. So mm. because of that, then I said when I grew up, I would try as, because I was trying, people were, were trying to stop me from fetching water. Mm. You're like, uh, I don't know if you, for those who live in town, you may not understand, for those who live in the village, Fetching water just from uh, a spring, mm -hmm. just walk in with your your mtungi and then you, mm -hmm. yes, with some two pipes there where you put and then you take home. So sometimes you always ask, this water's coming a lot, mm -hmm. and somebody's uh, telling you that you can't access uh, it, you are, or you have to wait until that person finishes. So I see, in my small aspect as a as a boy, so this is just I will always try and uh, mm -hmm. and work uh, against that aspect. Even sometimes when you get sick. I used to go to the a dispensary. Uh, sometimes you can stay there for a very long time without being treated that time when you have a simple ailment. So I said when I grow up, I want to be a doctor mm -hmm. so that I can do better than uh, what I used to receive in my rural home. Uh, there was used to be a small dispensary called the Kionyo mm. Dispensary in Kisi County. So, so sometimes because of that aspect of uh, medicine, and then they just on this side, they say when I grow up, I'll try as much as possible to be to fight for the, the other people in society yeah. so that you can bring fairness. That's interesting that yes. you say that yes. because uh, you went into a profession, the medical profession, obviously. Yes. Yes. But then yeah. what you've said that you consider to be injustices has gone beyond fighting um, in the medical field. Yes. And that's how um, a lot more people have come to know of you and yes. what you do. Yes. Um, and if we can jump right into that, yes. a number of petitions that yes. you've brought forward yes. have then resulted in a number of things, you know, yes. um, suspension of, you know, particular issues, holding until petitions have been heard, you know, asking. Do you see these, even before we go to the details, do you see these as fighting what you consider to be injustices? Yes, but I consider this one... Um, I fight this one because we realize sometimes as a society, we need to work hard, especially for those who, are in, who cannot defend themselves. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like uh, most people, they ca I can call them uh, the young people, me and you were, were the young, because I call the WHO, uh, all age starts at 65. Anybody who is uh, below 65 is, young. is a young person. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so uh, all people start at 65 and above. <laughs> mm. So sometimes the challenge we have is that sometimes we can make a lot of issues, mm. uh, but uh, we can what you call keyboard warriors. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just talk a lot, but we don't move for about from that step forward. Yeah. Sometimes I always say it's good to move uh, forward so that you can fight for what you consider right. For example, when the government introduced IDs that uh, that we are supposed to pay ID a thousand for a new. 
uh, and you uh, for those Kenyans who want to be registered as citizens. Mm. Mm. I think it was fair because if you realize majority of these um, IDs, people who apply for them are a university, though, no, are just form four leave high school. Yeah. Yes, form four. How do you? Why do you get a thousand? Sometimes uh, for those who who are in the in town, you think a thousand is a is a small, small amount. amount. But even me, when I, for example, like if I give you my history, even at home getting even 10 bob to buy even some salt is very difficult. Mm. So how do you tell somebody, uh, like in most of our rural villages, we, our parents don't have money. Mm. So that's why I moved to court. I said, no, this, this ID should, even if we were not involved. Sometimes the, the constitution of Kenya uh, 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 mandates all policy makers. Before they make policy decisions affecting people, let the people be involved. Mm. That's why I moved to call and stopped. The same issue with this aspect of a e citizen, mm -hmm. where they say that um, that everybody, uh, every services should be accessed through e citizen, as part of our, what they call uh, bringing services close to the people. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a as a Kenyan, I have no problem with that, that aspect of um, making services close to the people. But you have to consider other factors. Among the most important factors that the, any policy which you make, the first and the f most important, even if it's very good, mm. just involve the people. Mm. That's the most important aspect. Involve the people. If you have a good idea, well and good, just involve the people. That's what the, the it's not my, my own liking, it's the constitution. If you take Article 10, as read with also Article 232, that whatever they did is what you call an administrative action. Mm. That administrative action, one, people should always be involved. They, should, they need to be involved. They need to be, what's your opinion? Well, how do you worry about it? For example, even the, the 50 cents, they are, say they are calling convenience fee. 50, 50, bob. 50 bob, yes. Mm. The convenience uh, fee. Sometimes people see, when we, we sit in the big tables, we see 50 bob is a small amount. But like, I'm sure you, you, you learned in these universities, mm. uh, most comrades, or what call students, mm. they don't have a 50 bob. Sometimes mm. you can take Skumawiki Ugali, mm. Mm. Which is uh, Ugali, uh, like our time used to be five bob. Uh, my week is around 10 to five, uh, five to ten shillings. Mm. That's around 15 shillings. So if you were to take current three Ugali, my week, you have to take five plus ten, which plus is 15. 50. Then add 50 on top. On top. <laughs> so your <yeah>, total cost <laughs> 65. is 65. <laughs> For Ugar is Kuma. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes they always say whatever policy decision make, they must be rational. Rational means and very reasonable. If you tell somebody in the street that they, because of poverty, I want to take Sukuma Wiki, Amo uh, Chapati Madondo, which costs around 30 bob. Mm. Sometimes it's not that you are, it's, you know, sometimes it's not your wish to take that Chapati Madondo. It's because of your pocket. It's your circumstance. Yes, your pocket's not aligned. Mm. Then someone tells you, before you can eat this chapati madondo or a skumawiki, which costs 30 bob, add 50 bob for the government in terms of transaction fee or whatever they call convenience fee. That's not rational. Because one of the principles of, of unconstitutionality is when policymakers mm -hmm. make what you call irrational decisions. Mm -hmm. Irrational decisions are those decisions which does, does not agree with the normal reasoning mm -hmm. of society. Mm -hmm. That's what I can say. What's the threshold for engaging the public? When you say, yes. before you make any decision, involve yes. the people. Yes. So what is sufficient public participation? As the rule of the general public participation, it's not a must that every Kenyan must be involved. And you don't have to have 50 million giving them their views for that to become law. Mm. Once you provide what called sufficient platforms, for example, uh, in the National Assembly, they just put a notice for, the, for those who, we, who are doing, who are wishing to do this. You can put up your petition, memoranda, you can come physically for those who wish to come. Mm. As, as far as you have done that, what's called reasonable exposure. For example, if I want to do public participation, I announce right now that people want to give public participation, bring the memoranda. This is 8 a.m. Mm. And then by 10 a.m. I close. Right? Is it that aspect? Mm. That's not a, a real public participation. That's what's called cosmetic public participation. Mm. Public participation should be what you call a reasonable man. That's what you call a reasonable man test. Mm. If you walk in the street, just ask anybody, not even educated, if I, I was to put a, a note today and I close it in the next one 
one hour. Is that one reasonable? Yeah, who's going to see it? How yes, much? exactly. But for example, you give like uh, all notices in the, in the media, in, mm. the, in, the, in, the, in the website, everywhere, in the emails, you give even a month or something. Then people, not all, if all Kenyans can, can give a public protection, so, and go, so that's even better. Mm. But it's not a method, ever, but you have to try, as policymaker, you have to try what you can call it reasonable. Mm. Uh, there's no like a, a standard way, but you forgot to call it a reasonable man. If you see something, for example, in your view, you can even if you don't you didn't go to school, you can say, Ah, this looks better. It mm. does, yes. For example, mm. Mm. For there must be evidence that you have tried to reach the largest number of people possible, yes. And one can verify that that effort has been yes. made. Mm. Yes, now whether they assent to that invitation, that's yes. a different matter, but you, the you effort tried. is clear, yes. Yes, yes. For yeah. Okay. So, yeah. you know what happens yeah. every time, yes. Um, uh, like but we obviously doc this is not the first time yes. you've brought about uh, an objection like this petition then ensues yes. uh, but every time it happens yeah. the backlash that comes yes. especially from those who instituted the original uh, you know idea mm. is that Kenyans are anti-development and anti-progress that the government is trying to make to put in place that will essentially help Kenyans um what do you have to say to that because you will hear a lot of it it already started yesterday the president spoke from overseas and said you know what okay there's a petition you're trying to block it but it's going to happen anyway what stirs you when you hear things like that and when i can start like me i like for development and most kenyans are very reasonable but that's what I always believe. Kenyans are very reasonable. Nobody uh, is against development. Mm. For example, uh, this issue of uh, e e paying school fees mm. through e-citizen. Mm. It's a good idea. It's not a bad idea per se. Mm. But number one, there are various flaws. Number one, people were not involved. Mm -hmm. The involvement of the people is not a choice. Like when uh, the president was swearing in, he was given a constitution and they said he will swear by what the constitution says. Yes. This is not my wording. Yeah. They say whatever policy it can be good, involve the people first. Mm -hmm. So if the constitution is saying, then are you saying that the constitution is bad? Mm -hmm. That's the same constitution which also gave him the authority to do whatever he wants to be the president. Mm -hmm. Number two, you have in, in the process you must make that whatever decision you make, you must consider or other aspects or all stakeholders in that field like in the education sector mm -hmm. we have many many stakeholders we have parents we have students who, uh, who are involved we have education officials mm -hmm. we have even our members of parliament you also consider about the situation like for example um, eric and charles if you remember you when we were growing up mm -hmm. Ma majority of Kenyans, in fact, are, are very poor. They live below the poverty line. Yeah. You check the, 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 the close to 8 million Kenyans live below the poverty line. Mm. And if you realize, only 700,000 of Kenyans are employed by government. And then 3.5 million uh, Kenyans are employed in a formal employment, formal. And then 15 million are informal, which means close to 30 million are not employed. Mm. For example, education is a right. Mark, they always say, as a parent, if you want to give anything as an inheritance to a child, no, you can give him land, that's an extra, you can give him kind of thing. <laughs> but the best thing you can give a child as an inheritance is just education. Mm -hmm. If you can give a child education, even if you don't give him anything, he or she will grow up and he will, she will move his or her own life very well. Mm -hmm. For example, when the school fees, most of us grew up, they were told we grew up in a, a fairly poor family background. I'm, I'm very sure even most of you, when you grew up, mm -hmm. you, that's the same aspect. And mm -hmm. that's where you are, you are here. We did not have enough money mm -hmm. to, um, to pay school fees. Our parents used to, if they have a sack of maize, just go and talk with the headmaster. You have this sack, that's converted for, for, for fees. Mm -hmm. You can go even with Mbuzi. Mm -hmm. eh? I'm to be honest in a person, he, he or she, the mother or the father, is not that he's faking, he's real. Mm. So he doesn't have the money. The but only thing he can he have wants, is a booze mm. or, or a condor mm. or then the maize or beans. Then a, they ask him. I'm a meal, exactly. Mm. You want to give him my limb. Because you don't have <laughs> Then my limb is not my wish, I'm not paying fees. Mm. Kindly allow my child, most of the, more than not, 
uh, students are, are sent back home. Yes. The minute they are sent back home, the parents comes with him mm. or her to the headmaster, my Mwalim. Kindly, even if I stay with this child, even three weeks, to be honest, mm. nothing comes like trying to milk a stone. Mm. Just kind of have this sack of maize, uh, convert to fees, I would want to look for others. It's another aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how much most of us uh, learn, and we're doctors because of by virtue of that. Mm. And sometimes, so how do you give Mbuzi, uh, how do you exchange Mbuzi in e citizen? Even Mbuzi <laughs> itself, if you were trying to put it in the portal, it will not even. Uh, uh, the only thing you need to do is first, you have to go to the market <laughs> and uh, sell it, and hoping that you will find a buyer. <laughs> Doctor, yes. does the directive say <laughs> yes. you cannot accept Mbuzi? The directive from Dr. Bell. Mark, there is, I'm very sure you, <laughs> they does not say, but sometimes I'm saying, <laughs> what we are saying is that they are saying all fees mm. should be paid by that. Mm. So what does the word all? It's an English name. Uh, In, all uh, encompassing, total. All, <laughs> exactly. We're saying, Mark, they say without that, exception. Yes. Without exception. Yes. Uh, I agree you don't say specific, and numbers is not allowed, yeah. but... When somebody says all, and if you say some, we we'll pay fees in then this one. Then we know that the mbuzi is not included. Mbuzi is allowed. <laughs> huh? Because, uh, let me tell you, major, let me, uh, Eric, I'm very sure. Where, uh, Kenyans are, uh, majority of us were struggling to, to survive. Sure. I think it's a, it's, it's a facetious argument. As we're going into the break. Yes. There is no directive from the ministry. Yes. That says, yeah. headmaster. Yes. Mbuzazi yeah. kuja na miwa, kura miwa, toa school fees. Yes. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> circumstances allow <laughs> the headmaster to yes. do that, to accept the mirror, to accept the music. It's is it is it on government paper anywhere? No, it's not. Headmaster, you should. So that's what I'm saying. But Eric, I'm asking you, what the word? That's the word. I'm very sure you <laughs> what, read. What does all mean? <laughs> what does the word all mean? Just if somebody <laughs> can look for a dictionary. <laughs> to you know, Doctor, we had this discussion <laughs> earlier on. Yeah. I was the chairman of the board of management of a school in the village, and yeah. I was telling him, yeah. sometimes a parent has skills. Yes. You mm -hmm. need to build. Yes. They'll come and build for you, but they don't have money. Yeah. Yes. So you convert the labor. Yes. Exactly. Into money. So yes. If I'm to go by his reasoning, mm -hmm. you can't fit labor into his reason. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> 26 minutes to nine. Let's take a break. Dr. Magaragi Kenji is a human rights activist. He is one of several petitioners who have gone to court to challenge the this order for school fees to be played through e citizen. His is actually the one that has ended up now seeing this suspension pending hearing of the case. He has taken many other cases in court and we are asking him the thinking behind it and also just having a conversation to understand this new human rights activist in our midst. <laughs> it's called the new Okio Mtata in the footsteps of Okio Mtata. But there are many like him. We'll be back shortly. Good morning. This is the situation. decisions that are being taken by government and you also now want to introduce um, some decisions to be made. This is one of churches though. Why? In fact, um, well, uh, that petition, what I was saying, for example, if you read uh, Article 201 of the Constitution, mm. it says that tax burden should be shared fairly and equitably to all people in society. That was what I was asking even before we close. What, the, what does the word all mean? Mm. Then, if you look at also the, the statutes of the, uh, the Income Law Tax Act, mm. Cap 470 of the Laws of Kenya, that's a Section 3, uh, as read with uh, Section uh, 13 and the first schedule of the Income Tax Act, it gives exemptions to some groups of people. Mm. That includes even the, uh, uh, the, 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 the CS for Treasury can decide to gazette, Eric, you are as a person, not to pay tax. Mm. So that's what we were trying to ask the court. What's the rationale for that? Because according to the uh, sources of uh, law, the constitution is superior than an act of parliament. Mm. So that's what we were trying to tell the court. Uh, the tax, Kenyans are, are our, our tax, as a matter of fact. Mm. But uh, that tax, in, in my view, or what the law says, should be shared, that burden should be shared equally along all people, among all peoples in society. That was the basis of what I was saying. Find that first, uh, two one say the tax burden should be shared equally. It's like uh, if we were to carry a bag of maize, uh, which we are supposed to eat for the whole family. Mm. You cannot uh, allow two, three people to carry 
then the, the other one is just relaxing uh, and yeah. saying oh just card me my work is just eating <laughs> so that's what i was trying to put across that uh, generally let us have she, in fact if you remember even before uh, this one mps never used to pay tax mm. uh, the, of course the after the petition which was uh, filed they started but what we're trying essentially saying is that the, uh, most of us uh, were recovering because of the tax burden. But what I'm also saying at the same time, that let this tax burden be, be shared, shared equally. And equitably. It does not matter which sectors of the economy you are. Mm. If you are in the uh, media industry, pay the income tax. If you are in the medical industry, tax. If you are in the religious industry, tax. If you are in the everywhere, tax. That was, that was the basis of the, of the, the argument. So, Dr. how do you decide which cases to take to court? Do you uh, receive petitions from people? I like it in our doctor. I think Peleka Ikotini. Or do you sit and see something and you think this one I need to take to court? Yes, first you you uh, you have to know the current. You have to read newspapers, mm -hmm. uh, get media, so that you can know the current aspect. Mm -hmm. In addition, most of the time, most of my work as a surgeon on fairy business. I'm also an employee of county government of Nakuru. Mm -hmm. So I wake up very early in the morning, normally around uh, uh, 7 or 8 after eating breakfast. That's very early. I go, I go to um, do the, uh, the hospital. Mm. Sometimes I also teach uh, our young colleagues, doctors, mm. so that they can become like us. Mm. After that, I do ward rounds. Ward rounds, just you, you ensure that all patients are okay. Then you do surgery in the theater. Then essentially the, the whole day ends mm. in that aspect. So by uh, we talk around four, five, or thereabout, you you come home, you see your your your, your family. I like a family, generally like mm. me. I like children mm. and our family as a whole. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes, all, after all said and done, the family refreshes you and moves on. Mm. Mm. But sometimes uh, during that time, you find that there's something which uh, you have learned during the day, mm. which needs, in my opinion, uh, attention. Mm. I have a, a computer in my home. Mm -hmm. So you go there and then you draft a petition. Uh, okay. You are self there between uh, 8 to even 10 or between 10 to 1 a.m. You make it sound like a hobby where somebody would read a book while I draft <laughs> petitions. When I'm yes, I, I like drafting. I journal. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I, like, I like drafting petitions and, and even after that I like writing submissions. Mm. Submissions is what you tell the court to your thinking. Mm. Apart from the facts that what you are thinking and the basis of the law. Then the, because of the e-filing system, mm. which was brought by a former Chief Justice uh, uh, Maraga. Mm. So by 1 a.m., you just file online and they pay through M-Pesa. And then you wait for the, the case to take its natural course. They go to, to, to hear what your view, they agree with you or they disagree with you. And life moves on. Does it? This is the thing yes. that, uh, you know, you can't run away from speculation and conspiracy, etc., etc. Yes. But there are many folks also, mm. um, maybe who would sit in the container of backlash, mm. who are saying that you're sponsored by people. These people, interestingly enough, could either be on the government side who are actually not all right with what's happening in government. These people could be on the other side of government who actually just want to make sure that they are constant, you know, thorn in the government's flesh. But that you, Daktari, are not acting on your own. What do you have to say about that? Uh, first, uh, this is the first time I'm getting that aspect. Really? Uh, mm. there, there has been those uh, aspects of that, oh, I'm sponsored, oh. Uh, generally, to be to be honest, I always believe the way, if I gave you the, the, the my history where I grew up, I don't like what I consider injustice, especially especially for those who cannot defend themselves. Mm. Uh, Charles and, uh, and uh, uh, Eric, mm. And okay, what I'm trying to put across is that if you realize, if you look in Kenya, there are three major groups of people. Mm -hmm. They're what's called the upper class. The who's who owns Kenya. Mm -hmm. they, they have billions in banks and others outside. Then there's what's called the low class. The low class is the person who wakes up one morning, the only thing he thinks, he or she thinks, is how to eat. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even think about security. He comes third and fourth. Then there's the middle class, where the majority of us lie. In the middle class, they also divided into two. There are some people in the middle class who say, as far as I come to work, I eat, let that let the happen, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. Even if the dollar reaches a thousand, you need to die. I will don't do anything. And, the, and then there are others like us who said, fine, this is something is happening. Can we do something? Mm -hmm. So I think I'm in that, in that group. 
said for example uh like for the, the story i told that i grew up in a fair for my background but currently i'm employed among 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 the few privileged 700,000 government employees mm. so if i was to be safe in quotes i would just relax let, let it even the id like me nikon id mm. What if you cut a million ton? You need to work. So not like that. Mm. Uh, it's it's worth it and I can afford fifty bob. Mm. Mm. But there's uh, some people who say like this is not fair, and that person in the village who cannot eat cannot have even find money. I'm using my money to file a, a petition. When you file mm. a petition, it's not free. I use my hard and money, my salary, my everything to file a petition on behalf of the public. So I'm losing in terms of income. Mm. So, but I'm saying, let me lose this uh, in terms of income as far as we can make a better society than we, uh, uh, than we found. It. Uh, Eric, if you remember, we do, don't live uh, for eternity in this uh, world we mm. were in. Mm. But if we were to consider 50 years down the line, even 100 years from the line, all of us, we may not be here. We'll be yeah. gone. Yeah. Sometimes you always wonder, why would we use a lot of energy to, to fight even for land, for everything, when 50 years down the line, no, none of us, will, even 100 years from now, none of us will be around. But the most important aspect is that wherever we are, let us make our society a better place than we found it. They always say, you may not change the world. You cannot change the world. Mm. But they always say, do something small which can make us a better place than you found it. So you are driven by self yes by what you believe in yes you're not sponsored by anybody yes i'm not sponsored by anybody so you sit and you see something has happened you maybe read the papers you yes. watch the news yes. you follow social media then you see yes. something and you it, it pricks you and you feel this yes. this is unfair yes you go and sit down on your computer yes you file a petition you pay for it yes and you take it to court yes and you seek an immediate injunction yes. pending the hearing, and hearing. And yes do you have the commitment to see through a case do you have the resources to see through a case and i'm asking that because there are those who may say that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what you are is basically just vexatious you just want to be the rabble rouser sir carry me somebody in leo at no put an injunction on it like, like but then you have so many injunctions have, yes at the same time yes but uh, you do not have legal representation you're working alone so you will not be able to sustain all these cases at the same time but they can because i uh, for example i start a petition uh, preparing a petition by after i've written around 7 a.m mm. i write a petition for around four five hours by 1 a.m the petition is is fully then i i file it through online Already, by five, I'm sleeping at one a.m. or two a.m. That's a sacred because eight or seven a.m. I'm supposed to be in the hospital. Mm. Then, in addition to that, uh, I don't. Uh, of course, I don't. I don't rep have legal representation. Mm. The law allow us allows anybody to represent himself or herself. Yeah. So I represent himself myself. The good aspect nowadays is what's called e-filing, mm. and there's what's called Google Teams, where you can. Uh, you can uh, essentially appear in court mm. where you are. That's why sometimes when the case appears, whether I'm in a, in a theater, I just walk in, there's a, a place, a room there within theater. Mm. Uh, I, I discuss with the, with the judges, uh, then they give direction. Then in the, once I've finished everything, Go the medical at around 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., I make submissions. And even the Kenya law, the, the authorities are there, you download, attach. Mm. Then you send. <laughs> then you leave the, the judgment for the court. Mm. The judgment can agree with me mm -hmm. or can disagree with me. Mm. Uh, whatever you decide, so say, okay. It's mm. not a, a must you have to win. But it's, 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 it's a, sometimes as a society, you need to do what you believe in. Mm. What happens afterwards is none of your business. <laughs> for, exa for example, like the, uh, the president says that... Uh, the reason why he wants to bring these fees to e-citizen to, e -citizen to avoid s some some schools charging levies, mm. that might be a good idea. Mm. But the same argument that, for example, these ro roads we travel in mm. cause accidents, people die. Dying is not a good thing. Mm. But we don't uh, close the roads by virtue of that. You make policies <laughs> to prevent what you are trying to sort out. <laughs> You think yeah. that's 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 why we have laws. When uh, something happens, you don't um, you the whole thing down. exactly mm. just make policies. For example, 
a whole president saying that uh, they want to do that. He has every instruments of power to do that. He has DCI, he can investigate, he has officers, he can go. If we have one or two teachers who are misappropriating um, funds, they should be held accountable. But generally what I know from my honest experience, teachers are among the best professionals I know about. Of, mm. of course, you can't miss one or two was uh, one of issues, which is the same like in all professions. Mm. Like in the media, most people, are, you are good, but you cannot miss one or two is, <laughs> like even the medical profession, we are also good. Mm. But you cannot miss one or two is, but well, by well, well. one or two doctors is bad, mm. you cannot say close the whole medical fraternity or uh, all the other all hospitals. So that's what I'm saying at the end. If there is a problem with that, my view is that let us have checks and balances. Mm. Let's have policies. But when you are also doing that, the, the whole mark of anything just involve the people. This is it. And, you know, I think that's it's interesting that that's where you come back to at the end of the day. Yes. That if you're going to have a constitution yes. which upon it rests sovereign power in the people, yes. that the decisions that you're going to make yes. which affect them should include them at yes. the very beginning. Yes. Okay. So as you keep saying that, then I hear you also saying that you have no personal... Uh, gain that you're after here exactly but you're saying look can we have a people centered governance yes whereby people are involved for you to then go ahead and execute what then the people have said is that correct uh, yeah like for example my, my issue just to bring out what i think is is a, a problem in society mm. Mm. You bring it out, you tell the, you, you do the, those institutions which have been put by the constitution, which you are supposed to do. For example, when a bill is there, you write petition to parliament, uh, the normal things. Uh, when you have um, an issue which does not need parliament, you move to court and do a business. So at the end of the day, the, the hallmark of, of doing these things is to make society better. While you are doing that, Sometimes you as a person you suffer because you know, sometimes there's a risk. Mm. Mm. I'm very sure uh, you have heard some people getting lost and never found. Mm. But so be it. If that is the solution, the other people assuming something happens, assuming, mm. uh, I don't know who would do it, but assuming, mm. there will be people who will remain. They, that society will be better, even, even if I'm not around. They will be better by my, my issues I raised. Then I left them. The principle is to leave the society a better place mm. you are than you to pay left. The price. Yes. Mm. So that even the, in terms of financial aspect, mm. filing a petition is not cheap. The users, for example, this main petition is they take a lot of your financial aspect. They take a lot of your um, time. time. Then you are also I'm also supposed to have my. I have also apart from this, I also have uh, passion to serving on my patients. Mm. Mm. Majority of patients who come to public hospitals are not. I cannot say I I can I can say not very rich, mm. but uh, the so-called the middle class, they are those who have insurance. They really come to public hospital. Mm. Uh, so I am serving what I consider the poorest of the poor in society. I put myself in their shoe mm. when I was growing up. So I also want to. I don't want to be paid by the government without working. Mm -hmm. That it means also I will be stealing from government. Mm -hmm. For example, you are paid and you are, you don't see patients. <laughs> yeah. Then it's not it's not fair. That's why normally I always do most of my petition at night, uh, between uh, eight a.m. to mm. around one a.m. When I've done all the uh, the patient, but even when I'm doing the patients, uh, the the petition, if I get a call from the hospital, you and go. I imagine as has occurred, somebody has been shot, like in the in that's in the, in the surgical field, you find somebody has been gunned, some two three bullets in the abdomen. Mm. You have to leave, you leave that petition because the petition you can continue tomorrow. You rush to theater. You stand there for three, four, five hours trying to sort out that patient so that the patient can be alive. Mm. You sort him out, him or her out. If there is matumbo metoka inche, unarudisha ndani. Kama medungwa kisu weni, they were there, unajaripu, unairipea. Mm. Not like that. Una, una mungazea damu, you step. Because me, I want also my patient to have a good outcome. Mm. And at the end of the day, when I find a patient who was about to die and I've done something surgically, mm. and the patient comes better and he walks out of that gate, it gives me a lot of motivation. I've said I've made a life, somebody's wife, somebody's son, somebody's daughter, to have a second chance in life. 
and it gives me my that satisfaction. Even when I find a, I walk in the streets, I find a patient who operated long time ago. I'm a doctor. When he said, "I'm more I'm the one," I just feel very happy. I feel happy. I may not even remember him more, yeah. but I feel very happy. So that's why I'm saying that as a society, whereas we also work in the uh, aspect of medical, we also need to, uh, in the uh, in the human rights aspect, we also need to ensure our patients get the best care, mm. even if they are poor. Mm. Being poor should not be a crime. It shouldn't be. Yes. Doctor, if somebody felt, okay, I have some time. Yes. And maybe I can donate my time to Dr. Yes. For research, for one or two things. Yes. Can they do that? Yeah, it would be extremely can, happy. Can you form a team? Okay. And then how do you guard against mm -hmm. that team being infiltrated by saboteurs? Like, you, I'm sure you have learned about management. The back stops at the boss. Mm -hmm. If you, for example, you are ahead of this group, if one of you, you have to monitor battle management, the so-called leadership and management. Mm. A manager does to, to ensure society moves on. Yeah, there's a day-to-day -day running. Mm. A leader thinks, keeps with that idea mm. uh, so that it can bring that aspect of it. And so if you are the head of the, that leader, you are a leader in that group, you ensure that policies, the vision, everything. Because if you leave an organization to run on autopilot mode, mm. Then at the end of the day, you the, the vision, the initial vision gets lost in between. Mm. Yeah, you, have, you have to work extremely hard so that you, you, you ensure what you work for it is better. But the, the hallmark of everything that let us live this society, a better society than we found it. Sometimes the rule has be challenges. Mm. Sure. I don't disagree. Sometimes this, uh, this aspect, what we are doing, is not for the faint-hearted. Mm. Uh, you need to like put your head for... Well, then uh, put your head above the, the crowd. Okay. But for the betterment of society. If somebody called you today. Yes. Actually, I have a dossier. Yes. Okay? yes. And I want to give you this dossier. Yes. And this person happens to be maybe a person in government or person in opposition or person with political uh, dreams and aspirations. Yes. They tell you, I have this dossier. I live in all those fees that you need to pay. Mm. I'll give you the money. You file this thing but you file it, you are the face of the petition. Would you accept? Like, I told you, let me answer yes or no, mm. the first answer. Let me explain. I say what I'm doing should be objective. You see the petition, what it's trying to put across, and then you consider what the Lord says. If it all, for example, if you find somebody which says that uh, uh, somebody is planning to take all the fees of the uh, students, to take for personal use. Mm. He has brought you that dossier. What does the constitution do? Does the constitution allow a private person walking with some public money? No. It doesn't matter mm. the source of that information. What says it's objective? Look at that issue objectively. Mm. Is this what is what is for example if you say merit? Is there merit? If for example says ah merit Eric, I, I don't like Eric. His face is not good. Mm. Let, let, us, let us take him to court. Mm. To change that face. To change that face. <laughs> or we ensure that he is fired. See, not like that. Yeah. So, Nangalea form, you can always see what objectively face here, Eric, how does it affect you? <laughs> More like that. You exactly. Yeah. Then you see that this one is not objective. Obje you look at the, word, the underlying word, if you can remember everything, is the objectiveness and what the law says. Mm. Uh, yes. uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Every time Nikki Mwangalia. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it affects my quality of life. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, yeah. the issue is the what? Objectivity. Is objectivity and the word as the law. Because, like, for example, mm. the, the court of law, mm. don't, they, they're they not like Wagangas. Mm. where well, they juggle uh, this one and this one, then they find the answer is B. They use the law. Mm. So you have to say this one is what was done. The law says this one. Very good. Yes. Dr. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Dr. Magare Gekenyi is a human rights activist. He's also a doctor working in Nakuru County. He's been our guest and we hope to have you here many, many other times to come. Makofi Tafalali Kodaktari, thank you very much for what you're doing. Thanks thank you. a lot. Also. Keep doing that. People are saying on social media, let's clap for you. Let's urge you to continue doing what you're doing. Otherwise, I it's appreciate also for giving time to come. Mm. But the, the, the hallmark we said, let us make the society a better society than we found it. Indeed. Thanks good. a lot. Time for the news, 9 a.m.